Hey everyone, welcome to another game review, and this review is going to be on Jack and Daxter and the Precursor Legacy, another fairly old game. Um, it came out in the year 2002 and was created by Naughty Dog, who previously be, were famous for the Crash, the original Crash Bandicoot games for the PlayStation 2. I believe the ones that they made were the original trilogy and Crash Team Racing, if I'm not mistaken. So this was their first leap to the PlayStation 2, and personally, I think that it was really well done. Alright, um, the story revolves around Jack and Daxter, who are two elf children living in Sandover Village. However, they disobey Samos the Sage's orders, the sage of their village, and go and steal the fisher local fisherman's boat to travel to a place called Misty Island, where he previously forbid them to go to, where they meet mysterious creatures known as lurkers. And over here, a, an evil plan by the two main villains of the game, Gaul and Maya, to take over the village. Just a second. Alright. When they get back, Samus is obviously mad at them, but on, they're on Misty Island, though, Daxter actually falls into a pool of this liquidy substance called Dark Eco, which turns him from a human, or elf, whatever, into a furry little otzel, which is a cross between a weasel and an otter. So now Jack and Daxter must travel around the world to meet Gaul, Acker on the Sage, so that Daxter can have the potential of getting turned back. Not knowing that he's real, they're, that they're going to have to destroy him at the end of the game. Um, that's basically the story. Uh, the characters, obviously, are Jack, who's mute in this game. Daxter, who's basically the comic relief. Samos the Sage, who's the main sage of the game and is a real douchebag for the majority of this game. Uh, Kira, who is... The love interest, both Jack and Daxter likes her, but she likes, uh, Jack. So it's kind of like a love triangle. And then, of course, there's the other sages. The blue sage, which is in Rock, in Rock Village. The, uh, red sage, which is in the volcanic crater. And the yellow sage, which is jet in the area just before Gaul and Maya Sinodel, which is the final level of the game. The final area of the game. Um, then of course there's the eco of the game. There is blue eco, which allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. Green eco, which constitutes your health. Uh, 50 small green ones, or one big green one, equals one health container thing. And you can take up the four hits at a time. Three health containers, and then 50, uh, and then a like, and then 50 green Ecos. Um, then there's yellow Eco, which constitutes shooting fireballs, and then there's red Eco, which constitutes stronger attacks, and bigger range attacks, too. And then there's dark Eco, which you don't want to touch in this game. There's dark Eco boxes lying throughout the game. If you touch them, then you get hurt. Yeah. There's, like, Naughty Dog added so much into this game that it's kind of difficult to talk about it. I mean, you know, so I don't leave anything out, so please bear with me here. Um, the gameplay in this game is really fun. There's a total of 16 levels in this game. Uh, it starts at, well, the, it starts at the opening level, the, uh, one where the gameplay starts, the tutorial level, guys are rock, and then there's Sandover Village, Centennial Beach, uh, Forbidden Jungle, Jungle, um, Misty Island, um, Fire Canyon, Rock Village, Lost Precursor City, Precursor Basin, Boggy Swamp, uh, Mountain Pass, Vol Volcanic Crater, Spider Caves, which is my least favorite level in the game. Um, uh, 
a snowy mountain, la lava tube, and Golemaya Citadel. So yeah, 16 levels in the game. Golemaya Citadel is probably tied with my favorite level, that and Centennial Beach. Or maybe for your I don't know. I mean, I say, I, I really like all the levels in this game. I hated Spider Caves when I was a kid. I had to have my mother beat that level for me when I was a kid. That's how afraid of it I was. Because, kind of honestly, in real life, I'm afraid of spiders in real life, but not if they're like right, in, or not if they're like 10 feet away from me. If they're right next to me, yeah, but not if they're like 10 feet away from me. In video games, not the case. They tend to make them so fucking scared, much, much more scarier in, real, in video games than they actually are in real life. Oh, man. And Jack 2 even made it worse, which I'll talk about when we get, when I actually do that review. And then, of course, as for the characters, there's all the villagers. There's villagers in, uh, or the uh, villagers in San Sandover Village, which, which consists of Jack's uncle, which you never hear from again in any other Jack and Daxter game for some reason. Um, and the village sculptor, the village bird watcher, the uh, village farmer, the village mayor. So I assume that the sage is like the president of the village or something, or the or or the governor, you know. Um, and then the and the village fisherman, who's never actually in his house, he's always in the forbidden jungle fishing. And failing horribly at it. And then in Rock Village, there's the uh, gambler, the warrior, warrior, um, and the geologist. And then there's Boggy Billy, who's only never actually in the village. He's always at his house, which is in the Boggy Swamp. Okay. Um, and then in the Volcanic Crater, there's only two villagers, the miners who are trying to dig a jewel out of there, I guess. Um, and then it, and it, well, the, uh, Yellow Sage doesn't really have a hut. He doesn't really have a village that he controls for some reason, so there's no villagers there, but, yeah. Now, the m main aspect of this game is to collect Power Cell, so it's another Mario clone game where you're trying to get, do everything to collect this main item to progress throughout the game. You know, in Mario, you collect stars to progress throughout the game, you need a certain number of stars to open each door. It's a similar aspect here. You need a certain number of Power Cells in order to ac access different parts of the game. First, you need, well, you, in Geyser Rock, there's only four of them, and you, and you need all four in order to get be able to get out of there. You need 20 in order to pass lot in order to pass Fire Canyon, even though there's gonna, gonna be like 36 that you can possibly get before that. You need, uh, like... 45, I think, in order to pass Mountain Pass, and you need 72, I think it is, in order to pass Lava Tube. And... Yeah, and you need 76 in order to be able to fight the final boss. So, however... You need, in order to get the true ending though, you need 100 power cells. But there's 101 in the game. So, yeah, you don't even need to get, need to get all po the power cells in the game to get the true ending. Alright, and then of course there's Precursor Orbs, which is kind of like a secondary item. If you cl there's a total of 2,000 in the game, and certain villagers will give you a power cell for 90 Precursor Orbs. And there's three Oracle figure things in the game, which have... There's three of them, in fact, which has two power cells each, and they'll give you 120 precursor orbs per power cell. That's a big part of the game, too, trading precursor orbs to get power cells. And then the tritary item in the game is the scout fly. There are seven scout flies in every single level of the game. Collect all seven, and you'll get a power cell. So it's a, it's a platformer in every sense of the term. Not only is there a lot of platforming elements in it, but also you get as in actual literally platforming, but you all, there's also, uh, um, a lot of collectible items in it, as well. Alright, um, and this game is really fun to play since since it's made by Naughty Dog, who previously made the.
the uh, Ratchet and um, Clank, or not Ratchet and Clank, the, uh, hold on a sec here, camera's a bit, hit a little bit better, um, the uh, Crash Bandicoot series, and the controls are very, very similar, so you have a jump, double jump, you have the punch, you have the downward attack, you have the spin kick and whatnot, very similar. Um, and also this is this is one of the few games that came out around the time that actually has a silent protagonist which I really like but I'm also really glad that they made Jack talk in the sequels okay, so despite how much I really like this game it does have its flaws so let's dig right into it then first off I felt that like there were only three bosses in this game, and if you wanted to and to get the true ending, you didn't don't even. Well, actually, I take that back. To get the true ending, you do. To buy, need to fight all three of them. To fight the final boss, you don't. There's the uh, giant plant in the forbidden jungle. There's Claw at the beginning of the mount, at the beginning of the mountain pass, and then there's Golemite inside of their giant precursor robot as the final boss. I kind of felt that there should have been more bosses, and there's. Other places where they could have made bosses, uh, you know, I mean, take the Precursor Basin, for example. You know, after you have save all those dark eco-infested plants, they could have easily put a boss there, you know, maybe like, uh, I don't know, that giant, that giant plant that comes up out of the ground afterwards or gives you a power cell before he gives you the power cell that'd be a boss fight. That would have been really cool, you know, a boss fight on the Zoomer. That would have been, that would have been kick-ass. Um, and also in the the uh, snowy mountains, um, a after you open up the door to the fortress and you go in there, then there could have been a boss that forms out of a like a giant snow creature or something, like a giant snow golem. That would have been really cool. Um, let's see here. Where else? Oh, and as much as I hate to say it, nowadays I do believe so in the spider caves there could have been a giant spider boss, okay? I'm sure there's other places that they could have put it to, you know, maybe in the Centennial Beach, um, a, bo a giant stone boss could have formed out of the uh, Centennials, you know? That would have been really cool, or... If they really wanted to load this game with bosses, then they could have put, also put a giant version of every single different type of lurker in, <laughs> in the game. You know, but that would have been loading with bosses, which, you know, would have been fun as long as they varied the gameplay up. But they didn't do that, which, uh, maybe it was a blessing, actually. Because if they wouldn't have varied the gameplay up, it would have just been monotonous and boring. But, I mean, they're Naughty Dog. I'm sure that they could have made it work. You know, but... Um, another thing I, another gripe I have with this game is, it seems a bit too easy and too short, like, I mean, I know it's supposed to be a kid's game, but, you know, a game that both the hardcore gamer, such as myself, and the, uh, casual gamer can enjoy, but, I mean, I th don't think it would have killed it the game to be a bit longer and a bit more difficult. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, well, other than that, I really don't see any problems with this game. Uh, the graphics are beautiful. They are so good looking. Um, the dialogue is extremely well written. All the characters' voices sound like they should. Uh, Jack does have a vo does have a voice. He just doesn't have a actual dialogue. Like he'll make random sounds, you know. Like like he'll laugh once in a while, and if you fall off a high ledge, he'll say mm, or whatever, you know. But he doesn't actually have lines of dialogue. He just has sounds like that. So he does have a voice, and it sounds appropriate for his character. Uh, the character designs are also really good, um, and whatnot. So yeah, so overall, this game is 
excellent. Like, it was Naughty Dog's first attempt at a PlayStation 2 title, and I think they just nailed it. Um... Uh, yeah. Another... Uh, oh, another problem I had with this game is... Kind of goes along with the difficulty, too, but... All... The majority of the minor enemies... A.K.A. the lurkers were all killed with one hit. The only uh, like a, one or two exceptions I can actually think of, which kind of sucked. Um, yeah. Anyways, I'll, I'll give this game an eight out of ten because it. I truly feel that it deserves that high of a score. Quite honestly. So yeah, I guess I guess that's it for this game review. Uh, rate, subscribe, do all the good stuff, and see you guys after guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye. Stay tuned for my next for my next video.